tell me a little bit of background on your on your faith, coming to believe in Christ for yourself. I think it's an amazing yeah. part of your life. It's been a journey for me. Uh, I was raised in a Catholic home, Catholic family, still Catholic, um, my family. I got two of the, one sister, one brother that goes to church with me. We go to a, a church that's non-denominational. We just believe in the Bible. Um, we, we follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, we do. But my journey has been a, a journey that where I turned my back on God. I, I was raised Catholic, so I knew that there was a God. I knew that there was a Trinity. Mm -hmm. I prayed. Um, but I could never be good enough. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad used to tell me that if, if you pray hard enough, if you do your catechism and your, your homework, your, you know, your religion classes, God might give you enough grace to get to heaven. And it got to the point where in high school I, I turned my back. I says, how good is good? And I turned to athletics. I thought athletics would make me important or make me stand out. So I played college football, and I got to a certain point at a, at a major university level. I wasn't very good. I thought I, as, I didn't think, I found out I wasn't as good as I thought I was, and it was the end. <laughs> that hurt. So then from there, I poured myself into school and work and this business. Mm. And again, it, it didn't satisfy me. Mm. Um, my wife and I, I'm going to like the Catholic church, my wife's going to Christian church, and there was a lot of friction, a lot of hard times. And she pushed me pretty hard to go to the Christian church, mm. and I kept pushing back. And it was amazing, really amazing how God kept chasing me. <laughs> God never gave up on me, and that's that's the great thing about the God that we follow. Mm. Jesus never gives up on a person. On their dying, their last breath, God mm. is still chasing that guy. So God was chasing me. I turned my back on God, and he's still chasing me. My wife and I are having issues and problems with our marriage, and uh, it's an amazing thing. God told her, she's going to a, a Bible study with some godly women. The godly women looked at her and said, leave him alone. Let God deal with him. And they gave her a book. It was an amazing book. It, it was How to Be the Wife of a Happy Husband, and it made her mad. She handed it back to those women and said, I'm not the problem. He's the problem. And they were like, you know what? Just read the book. So she read the book. She backed off. God started working on me. And in the meantime, my kids started going to the church that I go to now. And I saw a dramatic change. They started liking church. They started going to youth group. Um, they had a different countenance. They're, they, you know, they started to accept who Jesus really was, not the way I was trying to teach him. Mm. And I saw that. I'm a smart enough guy to, to see change, in, like especially in your children. You see that change? And I was like, that's real. Mm. It's not something that's fake, and it was a positive thing. And I go, what is that all about? So anyway, I started going to that church, and, and then uh, my wife got me to go to Billy Graham uh, Crusade. Yes. I accepted Christ as my Savior, and it's been a wild ride ever since. Yeah. Just that one step of faith. Just a small step of faith there. You, you think that, I mean, that's what we're talking about at River Point in this series. It's, uh, you know, how to take your life to great places because of a great faith. Yeah. And I, I just think one of the struggles we have is really understanding what faith is. Mm -hmm. You know, the faith in that incidence is that get out of your comfort zone and do something you yeah. weren't really yep. uh, comfortable. You, you didn't identify that in your in the sense of who you were. You left everything to go do this silly thing, apparently, but it turned out to be an amazing thing. How, how yeah. do you process your faith in that? I mean, to leave this and to go gold mining. So here's the thing that I had to chase down with this gold mining. I knew that there were some worldly enticements. There's the pursuit of gold. Um, so there's wealth. There's fame, TV. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure that God was in this. And God. I, w I became mature enough to realize that this is not something that... Dave Turn should do on his own. So I sought men out and I consulted with other men that came around me and they had the freedom to tell me if I was crazy or not. And we, my wife and I prayed about it. We were diligent. And uh, I knew that if God was in it and I took this step because of how faithful he was in mm -hmm. my past, I knew that if God wanted me to do this, that's where I had to go. I wanted to be in the center of God's will, mm -hmm. rather than be saying no and being um, pushing God away. So 
I, I asked God, we prayed about it. I had men around me that, that helped me make that decision. And what I did is I committed to God. I said, okay, there's some things that, that if I do this, this is my commitment to God. And one of them was, uh, we did a Bible study because I, huh. I saw how fractured they were. And that first year, my wife cooked breakfast for all of us every morning, and we had a Bible study and a devotion. And it's amazing how we came together. Hmm. And uh, by just being faithful and saying, okay, Lord, I'll go, but I need to do some things for you. And that Bible study, to this day, I believe, is the single most important thing we do. It's way more important than the gold. It's more important than the mining. It's more hmm. important than the TV. Wow. And if you ask my guys, hmm. the guys that come, They'll tell you the same thing. We just had a meeting, and I said, okay, guys, I'm doing a Bible study this year, devotions. And they, their, their response was, well, yeah. <laughs> Did you think we weren't going to do that? And they're all like, this is important. Yeah. And it's amazing what when men get together and they pray together, they cry together, they, they call each other out together. And if God's in the center of it, that's the, that's the faith that we have that God's going to be there with us. And God says he'll never forsake us and he'll never leave us. That, that fights into this notion um, that we struggle with, that if, if God leads you to do something, it's going to be easy. Oh, And as yeah. I watch the show, which I'm one of your biggest fans, I mean, I just, I mean, it's never easy. I mean, never. so um, that's what I, I don't know where we get this deception. Maybe it's from the devil that says that God's in it. It's going to be easy. And God's yeah. job is to make our life yeah. easy. And that's, that's yeah. not true. So you, you continue to see God in it. You keep coming back for more. So you must see God in it. I mean, it's not easy, though. Well, that's our that's my faith. That's that's what we live for. It's knowing that we... we I don't know the future. I, it's unforeseen. Mm -hmm. And I have faith that if, if God is in it and God says, Dave, take that step and walk to that rock, I know that from my past experience that if I take a step to that rock, God asked me to do it, there's something there for me. Hmm. There's... It, you know, is it going to be easy? to take that step what we do is not easy it's not normal mm. i could easy easy for me is here right i've done this for 26 years mm. this is this is my comfort zone this is i could retire here and be happy and um, we've got a nice house we've lived this is where i grew up this is my place i mean this is home um for me to leave this that's the difficult part mm. it's uh you know people think oh you're on tv it's not easy Hmm. Um, it's not easy what we did last year. When Todd took his crew and joined them with my crew, hmm. brother, there was some times there when um, I thought it was all going to come tumbling down. Hmm. And I thought, and I, it was, again, I had to get on my knees and go, Lord, how do I get out of this? Because we, we bring a group of men that, that are competing and a group of men that have been pretty, we've been pretty fairly successful at Indian River and now we're joining forces, mm. and now we got to take all these these personalities and, and competitiveness and meld them together. And it was kind of my job and Todd's job to do that, and it was it was a difficult job. But again, I knew that's what we had to do. And it's always been my thoughts in life that uh, if I'm going to work alongside of you, after you. You and I done working together, our relationship. I want you to be a better man mm. walking away than when we first met. Right. And so I've always had the opinion to try to lift men up, encourage mm. them, um, build them up, and not tear them down. Mm. You have to risk. I mean, you risk, a lot. I mean, failure. I think, you know, we are addicted to our comfort. I know mm -hmm. I am. Well, in Houston, we like our air conditioning yeah. pretty good, you know. I mean, ain't nothing <laughs> wrong with that, yep. you know. Yep. But but it's the idea that we also don't want to fail. In order, there seems yeah. to be this tension when you're trusting God that if God doesn't come through, you fail, and yeah. we don't want to risk that. I mean, you. I mean, talk about embarrassment or coming back with your tail between your legs to Sandy. That mm -hmm. that had to play in your mind. Oh, how do you get through that fear of failure? Many times that played in my mind. I did not want to be the guy that came back, came back to the family business and was a complete failure. I was like, mm. oh. But God God brought us through that. And uh, I think the other thing that's going on in America, too, is that men are afraid of failure. Yeah, um, We've been kicked around. Um, and it's time for men to start 
taken back some of the ground that we've lost. And you know, I told you earlier on that I don't want to do an interview if it's about me. Mm. I could care less if people, you know, I'm just a simple miner. I, I like to tell people I'm a simple minded miner. But what I do want to challenge is people, what I want to challenge people to do is to take that step. Yes. You know, mm. I don't care if it's doing a Bible study. Maybe it's doing Sunday school for, for your kids at church. You know what? Maybe it's coaching a little league team. I remember one of the best things I ever did in my life. For two years, I didn't coach my kids because I was too busy wrapped up in this. I thought, that i got to have a successful business. I don't have time to coach my kids. Finally, I, I started coaching my kids. It was one of the greatest joys in my whole entire life was coaching kids and pouring my life into kids. And so that's what I, that's what I want to tell people is, is get off the couch. You know, if, if you're out of work, go retrain yourself. If you're, if you're hurt or something, get retrained. Find mm-hmm. another job. Get off the couch and go, go do something. I don't care if it's a lemonade stand, mm-hmm. if it's, uh, you know, opening a rock pit. Mm-hmm. We need to start doing that stuff, and we need to, to help our schools you know, in our churches and take back that ground that we've lost because men have kind of been beat up, it seems like. They, yeah. They're afraid of failure. Yeah, that's good. And and we have a lot of people coming to River Point every week that are trying to figure out if a relationship with Jesus is a real deal or not. Yeah. What would you say to somebody <laughs> on the fence going, should I give my life to Christ? Should I believe in Christ? What would you say to them to encourage them to consider God? It's the best life there is. Mm-hmm. People are afraid that they're going to have to follow a bunch of rules and regulations i'm not about rules and regulations i'm about a relationship with the creator of the universe Mm -hmm. and uh and when you have that relationship it takes a while to build that relationship it's not for me it wasn't something that just just immediate but as i've been consistent and following christ my life has been so amazing and so exciting Mm. um he's taught me a lot of difficult lessons but again on the other end, the blessings that, that have come from it are just amazing. So, yeah, Jesus Christ is real, mm. and we will deal with Jesus Christ one way or another. At one point in our life, we have to accept who he is, whether it's when we pass away from this earth, and luckily and hopefully it's not that, mm. that we accept him this side of the earth. Mm. Um, because if we haven't accepted him on this side of heaven, and we haven't accepted him, it's not... It's not a good outcome on the other end. Yeah. We're, we're, every person will bow mm. to Jesus Christ. It's an amazing story, Dave. I'm telling you, uh, just becoming your friend has just well, been inspiring for me just because uh, I think every man out there for sure wants to live a life that's bigger than what mm. he can put together. And um, I think that's why maybe your show is so popular is, is every man watches it mm-hmm. and goes, I wonder if I could get a little piece of this <laughs> bigger life. And the key I hear you saying is follow God. He'll yep. lead you to something bigger. Yep. Have faith that God will get you through it. Have yeah. faith when it's tough times. Pray to him and God will get you through it. 